October 11th, 1923. That was a day when nothing really seemed to go right for three brothers trying to make their mark on the rapidly changing post-war world. 19-year-old Hugh and 23-year-old twins Ray and Roy D'Entremont decided they could become rich and famous at the same time by holding up the Southern Pacific Mail and Passenger Train Number 13, the so-called Gold Special. Yeah, looking back on it later, it was obvious the three may have had some big dreams and plans, but little experience or know-how. And they thought, we can do that. And it seemed like a better idea to uh, rob for a living than, than work for a living. So they began looking around and they discovered that a train robbery might be the way to go. Rumors of a half million dollars in gold on the so-called gold special led them to stop train 13 near the west end of tunnel 13 at the Siskiyou summit. The plan was they would try to get the, uh, the mail clerk to open the car so that they could uh, steal the contents. But uh, Elvin Dougherty, who was the, the mail clerk, was not about to let them in to the car. Uh, he slammed the door. Ray tried to coax him with a shotgun blast to the side of the car, the car door. Uh, Doherty was not going to open it, so plan B was the dynamite. Planning a charge at one end of the mail car, the blast tore the car open and started a fire that not only destroyed the car and killed the clerk, but filled the tunnel with smoke. Not wanting any witnesses, they gunned down the engineer, fireman, and another engineer and ran for a hideout with blood on their hands and not a dime for their efforts at fame and fortune. It was called at the time the world's greatest manhunt. It took um, the law enforcement almost four years and a half a million dollars to locate the brothers. They knew within nine days who they were looking for based on the evidence left behind at the crime scene. What had led detectives to the identity of the killers was a pair of overalls. A criminologist from Berkeley, California, Edward Heinrich, examined them minutely, scientifically. Heinrich determined their owner would be five foot six inches tall and a left-handed logger of the Northwest woods. The clincher was this receipt for registered mail, which Heinrich found rolled up inside the pencil pocket of the overall bib. The receipt was signed on the back side, Roy de Autremont. Meanwhile, the boys were on the run, first down to California, then to Chicago and points east. Hugh joined the Army, ended up in the Philippines. The twins settled in Ohio, where Ray got married and started a family. The boys were on the lam for three and a half years. It took that long to catch them. Uh, a half million dollars were, were devoted to uh, posters. And it was through posters that all of them eventually were captured. And they were brought back to the Rogue Valley, to the old Jacksonville courthouse for trial. Newsmen from all over the country flocked to the old mining town to see the trial. It was the last big trial in that courthouse because the county seat had just moved to Medford. Hugh's first trial was a mistrial because one of the jurors died. By that time, he had pled guilty and was sentenced to life in prison. By the time he, the sentence was pronounced, the boys, the twins had been found and brought back. They decided they would confess for the fear that they might be uh, hung. So um, they confessed and all three were sentenced to life in prison. Everything we had was invested in the crime. We probably didn't have three dollars among us. And we weren't thinking about going back to those logging camps to that hard labor. On October 11th of 1923, this was the main north-south line for the Southern Pacific from California to Oregon. And here at Tunnel 13 is where what some call the last great train robbery occurred. However, others say there was nothing really great about it at all. It was not one of the last robberies. Well, it was not even a robbery because there was nothing stolen. It was a holdup rather than a lobby a robbery. Today, a small withered wreath still hangs at the east portal of Tunnel 13 as a token memorial to the crew members who died in that botched holdup 90 years ago.